The violin was originally modeled after a woman's body, and it has been one of the most influential instruments of the 20th century. What I love about the violin is that it combines physics, chemistry, and mathematics, and a little bit of artistry into one amazing superpower instrument. Now, it's important to learn the parts of the violin because there's so much physics involved and so much detail involved that, for example, if we were to move this part just a little bit the wrong way, the entire instrument would not make a sound at all. So how the violin works is we put the violin up underneath our chin, we take our violin bow, we place it on the string, and we pull the bow across the string. This causes the string to vibrate, and the vibrations get passed down to this part right here that we call the bridge. The bridge then causes the vibrations to be transferred to the body of the instrument and most importantly, on the inside of the violin, you have what we call a sound post on this side and a bracing on this side. So the violin plates or the top and the back of the violin are made of a really thin wood. So we need to have some support for all the pressure being pushed on by the strings and by the bridge. So the brace, which starts about here and runs across the body of the instrument, supports one side. On this side, we have what we call a sound post, which is a wood dowel that's suspended and held in place by pressure from the bridge. This dowel vibrates, and the sound goes around, sort of carries to the back of the instrument, and to back over to the top of the front of the instrument, and escapes through these two holes. Now it's easy to remember the name of these holes because they're shaped like F's and we call them F holes. So as we're playing the violin, we really want to be careful to not touch or hit the bridge right here. The bridge is not glued in place so it can vibrate correctly. So if you hit it, what happens is that the bridge falls over and then the sound post falls over and then the violin won't make a good sound. Now, the strings are held in place by tension, and what's interesting about the violin strings is they're a gut, sort of a synthetic or a gut core, and then the strings are wrapped with metal. So they also flex and change with temperature and humidity. So we constantly have to tune our violin in order to keep the strings taut and in tune. We do that through two ways. The first way are these pegs that we have up here, and the pegs are held onto the violin in place by this box that we call the peg box. Down here at the base, we have fine tuners that allow us to finally adjust the instrument tuning. Now, some violins have all four fine tuners, some of them have one, some of them don't have any. It's sort of the artist's choice as far as how many fine tuners they want on their instrument. This part right here is what we call the tailpiece, and it holds the strings in place. The tailpiece is held on to the violin by this part right back here, which we call the button of the violin. Now, violins have been sold for generations and generations, and there's some amazing famous violins like the Stradivarius, which have been sold for millions and millions of dollars. And then there's some horrible violins that we like to call in the industry violin-shaped objects, which are very poorly made instruments that sound terrible. They just sort of look like a violin, but they don't actually make a good sound. One good way to tell the maker of the violin is through the scroll, which is this part right up here. It sort of allows the artist to make a definite, this is my violin, this is a Stradivarius. Each maker carves their scrolls a little bit differently. You can also tell a good quality violin or a cheaper violin by the quality of your scroll up here. Some of them have been even made into different shapes like lion's heads or animal heads of some sort. Now, we cannot make the violin sound very good without a bow. A bow is equally as important as the violin. So, with the bow, we have this part right here that we call the stick. 
Now the stick is made out of two different types of products. We have a carbon fiber bow, which is what I have here, or we have a wood bow. Either way, they both work pretty well. Then this white stuff on this side is horse hair. We want to be very careful not to touch the horse hair with our fingers because the oil from our hand transfers onto the bow hair and makes this sticky, goopy mess that we really don't want. The horse hair is held in place at the tip of the bow or the top of the bow and at the base of the bow by this box that we call a frog. Then horse hair, like regular hair, um, expands and contracts with humidity and temperature. So every time we take our violin out of the case and our bow out of the case, we're going to tighten our bow to about this level. And then when we put our violin bow away, we're going to loosen our horse hair like this. Horse hair is also replaceable. So every couple of years, as you learn to play, you want to get new horse hair put on your violin. That's the parts of the violin and the bow. If you have any questions, send me an email at stringexpert.com. Also, if you go to stringexpert.com, we have a free printout of the parts of the violin, so you can practice all the parts on your own.